Okay, so I want to know, what is the consensus more interesting technology right now, Kevlar or foam? Because today we're going back to talking about an awesome Kevlar paddle. Hey everybody, it's Luca from Rackets and Runners. So ever since the Gen 3 Yola paddles came out, it feels like the hype around Kevlar died a little bit. And you know what? I'm not sure it should have. We decided to bring in Honolulu Pickleball because of how many people were asking about these paddles in the comments. And a quick little thing about me that you may not know is that I was actually born and raised in Hawaii. So as you can imagine, I was pretty excited. Also, everyone at that company is super cool. They're definitely bringing the Aloha spirit to Pickleball, which is awesome. But it's not just the vibes that are good. Their paddle performance definitely backs it up. But before we get into any of that, I just wanted to remind you that any of the paddles we talk about on this channel, you can check out on our website, racketsandrunners.ca. Also, please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow me and the store on Instagram, and let me know in the comment section what you want me to cover next. So Honolulu Pickleball has a few paddles, and today I'm going to review the J2K, mainly talking about the standard one because I preferred it throughout my playtest, but I'll also briefly touch on the J2K Pro. The paddle is 16.2 inches long with a 5.5 inch handle, so it's very close to that hybrid shape that 6.0 and Vatic Pro made popular. There is one important difference though. The paddle face itself comes down a little bit farther and it's a little bit more square down here. I just placed the J2K and the Ruby flat on a table to make sure I wasn't crazy, but you can definitely see there's a little bit more surface area here. It's a slight difference, but an important one that I'll talk about more with playability. I'll also be making a lot of references to the Ruby throughout this review, of course, because it's the other hybrid Kevlar paddle that I've tried, and it's also kind of the gold standard for this style of paddle right now. Finishing up with the specs, the J2K has a 16 millimeter core. It weighs between 7.9 and 8.2 ounces and has a swing weight of 113. Of course, the paddle is made from a thermoformed unibody construction, and the face is made from a 100% DuPont Kevlar weave, again, much like the Ruby. The J2K Pro has pretty much the exact same specs. The only difference is that it's made from Honolulu Pickleball's power weave, which is a little more dense and supposedly more powerful. There is one thing I wanted to touch on really quickly, and that's that as soon as I took these paddles out of the box, I could tell they were extremely high quality. They look very premium, the handles are very well made. Honolulu Pickleball clearly put a lot of effort into making these paddles, which at this price range is really special. Now let's talk playability. As soon as I hit a ball with the J2K, I was instantly reminded of the Ruby, and for those of you who have seen our review or our tier list, you'll know that's a really good thing. It has a similar feel on contact. You feel the Kevlar pocket the ball with a very plush control to it when you're not swinging the paddle quickly, and then it firms up the harder you hit. It's another one of these paddles that provides dynamic playability, which isn't just popular nowadays, it almost feels like it's required because that's the only way to be top tier in both power and control. Now I watched Steven from STS Pickleball's review on these paddles and he mentioned something very important. Not everyone is going to like that dynamic feel because it literally means that these paddles aren't consistent from one shot to the next. I completely understand what he's saying because anytime a paddle feels different on different shots, you're going to have to be a little more careful and adapt to that. But what I will say is that the J2K is one of the most user-friendly paddles that accomplishes that dynamic feel. Right now, there are three pieces of technology that give paddles that unique adaptability. Kevlar, foam, and also what Rhombus is doing with their grid pattern technology. Foam filled paddles are insane to play with. They feel soft, but then output a ridiculous amount of power if you swing hard because of the trampoline effect they add to the ball. Kevlar firms up the harder you hit, that's why it feels more powerful at faster swing speeds, but it doesn't add that same wild trampoline effect that foam does. That means that yes, Kevlar isn't as powerful as foam, but that also means that the transition from a soft shot to a power shot is much easier to understand. The rhombus paddles are much closer in terms of playability and ease of use, but I do think Kevlar provides slightly better ball feel, and good feel is the best way to master that transition from soft to firm. So that's the key here. These have a dynamic feel, and if you don't like that, you should just go for the Carbon J2, but understand that Kevlar opens up huge playability potential, and Kevlar is the most user-friendly gateway into that dynamic style of paddle. Now more specifically between the J2K and the Ruby, the feel is obviously very similar, but I did consistently feel that the Ruby felt a little bit more plush and the J2K a little more firm, and that difference was even more noticeable with the J2K Pro with its tighter weave. If the difference in ball feel is minimal between the J2K and the Ruby, is there really any significant difference between these two paddles? 
Yes, there is. Even though it might not look like much, the longer and wider paddle face makes for a pretty noticeable difference. The main thing to understand here is that because the J2K has more paddle face surface area, the sweet spot is a little bigger, but what you gain in sweet spot, you lose in hand speed and maneuverability. You have less of that quick and easy micro adjustability that you have with the Ruby, so it feels a little bit less reactive, and what that also means is that the paddle is less responsive to little tweaks of the wrist. The pivot point comes down a little bit lower, so you can't do this motion as easily. It is a tough sensation to describe, but basically the J2K doesn't feel as flickable as the Ruby. Because of that, I'm going to say the J2K is more user friendly and the Ruby is more advanced. It's easier to keep the paddle face consistent through contact here, but that flickability gives you more variety if you know how to use it. Just keep in mind we are talking very specifically about these two paddles and the differences don't really apply compared to other shapes and lengths. They both still feel like hybrid paddles which strike an incredible balance of that more forgiving side and the variety you get from wrist action, so really it's just pick your poison between which you value more here. The J2K is a Kevlar paddle. We've established this before. Spin is absolutely sensational with Kevlar because it does such a good job of pocketing the ball than using its grit to add spin. It's different to carbon because it has that longer dwell time so you can grab onto the ball and shape it a little more effectively, especially slower paced spin shots, which I had a blast hitting with this paddle. Now with that said, I do think spin is the one playability characteristic where you feel that larger surface area on the J2K has the most negative effect. It makes sense, you use your wrist to generate spin and because it's not as responsive to wrist movement, it's not quite as spin friendly as something like the Ruby. Again, marginal differences for sure, but they are there, and this applies to really any spin shot, whether it's drives from the baseline or flicky roll volleys, but it is most obvious up there at the net. It's a little clunkier, which is something you don't feel as much when you have time to set up and hit a full ground stroke, but you definitely do when you have to react quicker. I also did just want to ask, because this is something I've seen discussed a lot in the comments, but I obviously haven't talked a lot about actual RPMs on this channel. If this is something you guys are interested, I could definitely try it out, but a lot of reviewers already do it, and me personally, I try to describe the feel a paddle has when hitting a spin shot rather than the actual RPMs it produces. But yeah, let me know if that's something you would like to see with these reviews. Maybe if I added it in and then talked about how those numbers work with the feel, that would be kind of cool. Since they are Kevlar thermoformed unibody paddles, both the J2Ks are fantastic for power, especially once you get used to that dynamic feel and can perfectly manipulate them for the level of power you want. Now comparing the standard J2K with the Ruby, I do think the J2K has a little more power and pop. Like I said, the Ruby consistently felt a little softer and a little bit more hollow. Now that could be because I was using our demo that's been played with for more than a month. But yeah, the J2K just felt a little bit livelier in general. Now like I said earlier, Kevlar paddles are great because they provide that unique blend of both power and control thanks to that dynamic dynamic feel. Yes, it takes a second to get used to, but once you do, Kevlar paddles are absolutely elite in the soft game, and even though it is a little bit stiffer than the Ruby, that definitely applies to the standard J2K. It doesn't cushion the ball quite as much as the Ruby, but it's still much better than other paddles that are also this powerful, so it's right up there in terms of well-rounded playability. Now the control game is one area where the larger surface area really shines, in part because the larger sweet spot makes it more forgiving, but also the swing pattern I mentioned earlier. Because it's easier to keep the paddle face consistent during your swing, it won't move as much if you do make a mistake in your technique, which basically means the paddle bails you out if you screw up. Everything about this shape is just that little more forgiving, which is great in the soft game because touch is such a precise thing that most of us will take any help we can get from the paddle. Of course, there is a slight downside. The larger surface area means it's a little harder to quickly change direction and hit a deceptive touch shot. It kind of goes back to that user-friendly versus variety dilemma. The J2K Pro is also decent in the control game, but it does feel quite a bit firmer than both the J2K and the Ruby, so it doesn't have that same top tier playability in both power and control. It does have less of that dynamic playability, which is a huge reason why you would go for a Kevlar paddle in the first place, so I don't think it's quite as special. The J2K is a phenomenal paddle that's right up there with the Ruby in terms of playability, and really the only thing that separates the two is the price, and of course that slightly larger paddle face surface area. You really can't go wrong with either, and if you haven't played with one over the other, the differences I've pointed out won't be all that important, because at the end of the day, they're both Kevlar hybrid shape paddles, so they are pretty similar. But those differences are there, so if price isn't part of the equation, you should go for the J2K if you want a slightly more forgiving paddle that doesn't have quite as much variety because its shape is a little clunkier. 
really don't know which one I prefer. I think I might like that more flicky feel of the Ruby a little bit more for singles, but I played a lot of doubles with the J2K and it was such an easy paddle and I really didn't find myself wanting anything more from it, if I'm being honest. Is it the best paddle I've play tested this year? I don't know if I'd say that, but it's right up there with the Ruby, the Gen 3 Yolas, the Rhombus paddles, in terms of paddles that are pushing well-rounded playability past what it was in 2023. With that said, that is going to be the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. And remember that if you want to demo either the J2K or the J2K Pro, you can come visit us in-store or you can check them out online at racketsandrunners.ca.